Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 20 of my modded Survival Island. Last episode, we were working on turning our oak leaves into power using this little Batania setup that we have over here. And since the end of last episode, I made a few changes to the system. And uh, basically, I've added a few more mana spreaders so that each and every Munchdew has its own mana spreader. Now, the reason I've done this is because, as a bunch of people pointed out in the comment section of the last episode, the way that the Munchjews work is if they cannot send their mana somewhere. So if they have nowhere to send their mana to, for instance, because the mana spreader that they're linked to is full, then they will enter a timeout period where they don't do anything for about 90 seconds. And so what was happening before, because so much mana was being sent to that one mana spreader and the mana spreader couldn't get rid of it fast enough, when the Munchjews tried to send it, they couldn't, and so they would enter a period of timeout where they would do nothing, and that's kind of what was happening last episode when the leaves stopped getting broken. And so what I've done is I've added a few more mana spreaders. We now have one on every single Munchdew, uh, sending all the mana to the mana pool, and as you can see, uh, it's done kind of exceptionally well. We have a full mana pool now, and hopefully, as soon as I set this up so that the power is actually getting used, it should run indefinitely, at least until we run out of leaves, which may or may not happen. I'm not too sure yet. I haven't uh, strained the system enough to find out whether or not that's going to be a thing. But to start with here, you will notice I've moved the quarry since the end of last episode as well. The full 64 by 64 quarry that we set up over here is now done. We have a nice big gaping hole that goes all the way down to bedrock. And basically, we're going to do the exact same thing over on this side. Also, I'm not too sure what the heck happened here. I think we had like some chunk loading issues because we now just have like a massive plot of land underneath the ocean. It's real weird. I have no idea what the heck that's about, but the first thing we're going to do today is, well, actually, one of the first things we're going to do today is I'm going to quickly set up some diamond chipset production over here, and this is kind of going to link into what I want to do later, but I'm going to set it going now because this thing requires just a heck of a lot of power to actually work. So, uh, let me quickly throw down this iron generator. This was the one uh, that was originally powering the quarry and is now doing nothing. So I'll put that in there. Uh, these guys, I believe, take like 800,000 redstone flux uh, in order to create. So these could take a while. But uh, we'll come back to that a little later on. Uh, the first thing I actually want to do today is make some more redstone flux ducts and uh, hook up all the power that's coming from our leaf production system over here uh, to our quarry. And uh, hopefully that should provide it with about 200 redstone flux per tick, making it more than twice as fast, almost three times as fast as the quarry we had before. So, in order to get that to work, we're going to need a little bit of lead, like so. We're going to need, I think, some glass, which we may or may not have lying around somewhere. Possibly? Let me have a look in the logistics pipe system real quick. Glass. We do not. Do we have any in the furnace? We do not. Wow, okay. This will be a first. Do we have any sand? Sand. Wow, okay. In that case, then, let me quickly grab some cobblestone, and we will throw that into the macerator. You can go in there. That should get us some sand. Let me quickly redirect. Actually, you know what we could probably do? I wonder how far the mana spreaders can reach. Ooh, okay, let's test this. So, we're going to need, I think, a few more of this living wood. We are. So, I'll take a few of these so we can make another mana spreader. And once we've got another one of these, what I want to try is I want to see if we can point this from here kind of all the way to over by the quarry through this flux field. So uh, let me pick this. Oh, I still don't have a pickaxe. Jeez, one thing we are going to work on today, guys, trust me, is getting a better tool because uh, up until last episode, uh, I was in fact still using a cobblestone pickaxe, which did break between episodes. So for now, I'm going to quickly whip together an iron pickaxe so I don't have to break all this stuff by hand. But my plan for the second half of today's episode is to go ahead and set up a tool, which will hopefully mean that we never have to use the traditional like iron and wooden pickaxe access ever again but for now let me see if this works i'm gonna put you there we're gonna set the back to an output which is that first of all does that work it doesn't look like it does is that right or is it blue that seems like it's full of power oh there we go uh yeah no maybe Okay, there we go. All right, that's working. That's running out of power. Okay, cool. Now, if I put that there, can I link you from there all the way over to here? Oh, I can. Oh, that's great. Okay, in that case, we don't need any leadstone energy flux ducts. We don't need anything like that. We can just transfer the power directly from the leadstone energy cell over to this guy. Uh, let's see. How well is this doing on power right here? 
We are actually... Are we gaining power? We are. We're actually gaining power from the system. Okay, cool, cool. All right, that's probably to be expected because this guy is currently full of power. And that will probably actually take quite a long time to run down. You guys are all actually still full, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I wonder how... Ooh, I wonder how much power this thing's actually, like producing or if we need even more mana spreaders to like empty out this mana pool i don't know either way i'm gonna leave this running for a little while we have the exact same setup that we had before pumping the stuff out of this chest round sending it to everything else and sending it to the chests over there it might take a little bit longer for stuff to get over to the chest area than it did before but it should be fine and this thing should just run uh, absolutely perfectly so now that that's done, the first thing I want to work on today is I want to work on upgrading this here, the request logistics pipe system that we have set up right now. Because right now, the way that this works is we have to get our wrench, we have to right-click on this logistics pipe's request pipe, we have to pick what we want, request it, wait like up to a minute for it to appear in this chest, and then we can use it. I don't like that system. It takes way too long, it's way too like hard to do, uh, and by hard to do, I mean we have to use this wrench, which I don't like doing. Uh, and I want to change that. I want to make it faster, and I want to set it up so that we can access our whole logistics pipe system from anywhere in the world, not just this pipe here. And the way we're going to do that uh, is using a different kind of request system from logistics pipes, which involves this pipe over here. The Not this pipe, it requires this pipe, the remote order logistics pipe. This thing is fairly easy to make. It's an ender pearl, a redstone, and a basic logistics pipe. I did go ahead and take some torches off my islands between this episode and last so that I could get some endermen to spawn in because right now... Uh, our island is pretty well covered. There are no mobs spawning on it apart from in the spawner. And the spawner is set up in such a way that endermen don't spawn in it. Because otherwise what would happen is the endermen would kind of spawn in, walk into the water, and then teleport randomly around the island, which is not what I want. Uh, so instead I had to go around, take away a bunch of lights, wait for endermen to spawn, and then kill them. But I did manage to get myself uh, five ender pearls in the process. So we will take one of those, and there's our glass. <laughs> we will take one of those and make ourselves our first remote order logistics pipe. Boom. Boom, boom, and boom. Nice. So the way that this works is that uh, it works in a very similar way to this guy over here, the request logistics pipes, but instead of having to right-click it with a wrench, instead, we use what is known as a remote order card. I was going to say remote order card. It's not. It's called a remote orderer, and this thing is where those diamond chipsets come in because this is made using four glass and then either two diamond chipsets, which requires two diamonds and two redstone, as well as like 1.6 million redstone flux, or eight diamonds. And I didn't want to use eight diamonds. I would rather use the redstone flux, but I don't know how well that's going to work because this looks like it is going to take forever to complete. So... What I will do for the time being is we will uh, we will continue with this. I will wait for this to finish. Uh, we'll put you in there. Whilst we're waiting for that, I will continue with the rest of the system. And I'll kind of explain what my uh, my logic behind this is. So we're gonna have this guy here, the remote order, uh, the remote order logistics pipe. We're gonna have this guy sit about I think here. Could be a good place. We'll put it there. The reason I put it there is because it's connected to a logistics pipe, which means it comes to the junction. It will know to go this way, not this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so we can access everything that is sent to this pipe. So what will happen is we will make our remote orderer. And when we link it to this pipe, what will happen is when we right click on the remote orderer, we will get an interface that looks like this. And then what we will do is we will request certain items. Those items will then be sent to the remote order request pipe. What I then want to be able to do is open up an ender pouch and access an ender chest, which is linked to that pipe. So what we're going to have to do whilst we're waiting for our diamond chipsets to get made is I need to make myself an ender chest and an ender pouch. And uh, now if I just type in ender, we should get all of the stuff from the, uh, the ender storage mod. Now the ender pouch basically allows you to access an ender chest. It, it's, it acts like a portable ender chest. You've probably seen it before. It's pretty cool. So to make an ender chest is fairly easy. It's some wool, some obsidian, some chest, and some ender pearl, and a, bl a few blaze rods. Now, the blaze rods are kind of the hardest bit, but as you can see, we can compress five blaze powder and get ourselves one blaze rod. And as you know, if you watched some of the previous episodes, we can make ourselves some blaze rods by using our little system over here which still needs to get moved because this is a complete mess. But let's go ahead and let's put the glowstone into there. Let's put some redstone into here. And that should go ahead and start making us some blaze powder. Cool. Now, question number two. Do we have any obsidian lying around in our system? Obsidian, we do not. That is not a good thing. That is something that we're going to need to rectify real quick. We should have some wool. 
That should be something that we have. Uh, we do not. Wow. Okay. Do we have any string? We do not. Wow. What the heck? We are just not prepared for this at all. Okay. In that case, then, let's go ahead and break our trusty uh, industrial hemp to get a bunch of this string, which we can then turn into normal string, and then from there into wool. Thank you very much. Uh, what else do we need? We need an ender pearl. We've got that. We need some leather, which I don't think we will have, but I'm fairly certain we have enough cows on the island to get ourselves three leather. Let's have a look here. Leather, yes, we have absolutely nowhere near enough to make that happen. So, please, my friend, leather. Okay, that's one. I need you to give me two. <laughs> please, if you wouldn't mind. What is the cow's obsession with standing on the edge like this? It's not safe. That didn't give me any wow. Okay, well, in that case, then, I am kind of screwed. Let's have, there's a lot, of, a lot of squid. An awful lot of squid there, jeez. Uh, in that case, then, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to go get some obsidian using our terrain smasher setup that we used before. I'm going to wait for the diamond chipsets to finish making themselves. I'm going to wait until we get ourselves enough blaze powder. Actually, how many of that do we have already? We have... A grand total of eight. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this into the compressor. That should get us some blaze rods. I'm going to do that over and over again until we have enough blaze rods to make this. And then enough blaze powder to make this. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, we now have six blaze rods and one blaze powder. Which is not quite where we want it to be. But we are here for a reason. And that is because I am now going to make this little guy over here the alchemical catalyst. And this is made using four living rock, two gold ingots one mana pearl as well as two brewing stands which if we go ahead and grab some cobblestone which we usually have lying around somewhere we do let me go ahead and quickly make two brewing stands like so we will then go ahead and make ourselves a very quick mana pearl also i went ahead and added a second mana spreader to this to hopefully start moving the mana a bit faster but we still have a full mana pool and these things are still kind of struggling this thing is i think we need to add even more or maybe upgrade our mana spreaders to something higher tier because right now they are still Still struggling to get rid of the mana out of the mana pool fast enough and the monsters are just putting it in faster than they can get rid of it but uh, nevertheless having too much mana is not really a bad thing so well let's go ahead and make ourselves a mana pearl like so let me quickly go ahead and grab for living rock like so let's go ahead and make a crafting station for this island because i am fed up of crafting on the floor and then let's go ahead and uh, try something like this. So we need one, two, three, four, two brewing stands, one mana pearl, as well as two gold. That gets us an alchemical catalyst. And what this allows us to do is basically a few more things with our uh, mana pool here. So I put this underneath like so and we can put the burp back down now now we can do special recipes within our mana pool. For instance, we could turn zombie brains or rotten flesh into leather. Nice. So now that makes things a lot easier because A, we've used a bit of mana pool and geez, this is how it's supposed to run, by the way. This is what it's supposed to look like. Just consistently going and breaking stuff, but it'll probably stop in a second because the mana pool will run up, uh, will fill up. But uh, anyway, we've got ourselves the leather now. I did go ahead and make a few more blaze powder over here. Thank you very much. And we should, I think, have everything it takes to make the chest and the pouch, apart from the fact that I didn't get the obsidian. So I'm going to go away again. I think these guys are almost done. Uh, we got one. We're all, well, we're about a third of the way down on the second one. So again, I'm going to go away. I'm going to grab the obsidian real quick. Wait for that to finish. I'll be back in a second. And finally, quite a while later, we should now be able to go ahead and make ourselves an ender chest. Nice. As well as an ender pouch. Nice. So, now that we have both of these, we can actually get our setup up and running. And also, these two are done. So, I will take you. We do have the glass, which is good. So, let's, we might as well go ahead and make this guy as well whilst we're at it. Boom, boom, boom. That gets us a, a request, a remote orderer, a.k.a. requesting tool, DW20, which uh, is a Direwolf 20 reference. But, nevertheless, we will go ahead and we will stick this uh, ender chest down right about, if I can get it on. I can't. Them? No, I was going to say that will do, but that will not do. Because right now that is touching a golden pipe, which is not at all what we want. So let me try and pick that up again. If... No, oh, no, 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 we'll give that a second try. Oh, hover mode. Let's go into hover mode. There we go. All right. So now let's link to this. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to shift right click on our remote order logistics pipes with our remote order. Like so. Or just right click. And then if we go ahead and right click with this thing anywhere in the world... We should be able to access our system. Let me quickly right-click on this pipe. Okay. 
Okay, so I have found the source of the problem. It turns out, when I removed my quarry and also removed the golden pipes so that I could move them over there, I also completely disconnected my logistics pipe system from the power source, which is over here. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and reconnect these pipes. And now that that's done, all of these are back online again. Thankfully, you can see all the things are just like rushing to go places now because they haven't been working for like 40 minutes. But what we should be able to do now is right click anywhere in the world, thankfully, with this thing. So once you've right clicked it on the uh, remote order logistics pipes, you can now go ahead and right click anywhere in the world and it will show you all of the uh, items uh, in your logistics pipe system. And basically what we can do is we can go ahead and request things. So for instance, if I was to request a diamond, uh, it should get there a lot faster now because it's so close to the system the pipe is here instead of being all the way over there and basically the idea is because this ender pouch can access this ender chest we can see everything that's within there so now all we have to do wherever we are in the world if we want to request something all we have to do is simply open up our remote order for instance if we're over working on our magical crops in the distance over here we can right click we could say oh i need a stack of coal real quick request the request will be successful we then look at our ender pouch and this thing moves it in parts but eventually there will be a stack of coal in here and there we go 40 and then 48 and eventually 64 should arrive in here at, at some point but we can just request anything we want from anywhere within the world which if you ask me is kind of fantastic uh, one last thing that i've also gone ahead and changed since we cut away is i moved this a little bit closer I'm not sure if this has actually done anything or not, but my idea was these mana spreaders don't send a burst until the other burst has finished being sent. So I figured by making it a bit closer that they will send more bursts in the same amount of time. So I figured this would send mana a little bit faster. It seems to have not changed much. The mana pool is still full despite being sent faster. These were just the uh, leadstone flux ducts that we had lying around just all over the place. But, but yeah, we now have a quarry that is being run off of the leaves that are being produced by our tree farm. We now have have a fully remote ordering system for anything within our logistics pipe system. This kind of acts like a wireless terminal, if you would, from Applied Logistics, for those who are familiar with that. We can just request anything from anywhere, which is kind of fantastic. And also, with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode there. It is episode 20, which means there will be a world download link in the description. I'm currently playing on version 1.0.8 of this mod pack. For those who don't know still that you can play this mod pack, I'll put a link down in the description to a video that I made showing you how to install this mod pack. And also, uh, I would like to give a big thanks to Crazy Man on Twitter. Uh, he did a bunch of work helping me troubleshoot the problems that we were having with the server files. And now with version 1.0.8 of this mod pack, you can in fact download the server files and uh, set up a server if you want to play with your friends or do anything like that. So uh, yeah, links to that and everything will be in the description. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please hit like. I'm going to quickly uh, go ahead and just dump all of my stuff into a chest so that you guys can actually play along with this stuff and not just have to make your own. Here you go. We'll put all that in there. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like it. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next time.